Hey there, my name is Callie Chappelle, and welcome to this video where I'm going to be talking about how to make a poster in Adobe Illustrator. Now, although I'll be talking about the specifics of making posters, this is very applicable for making, for example, panels of figures or other graphics that you might use in science, such as a figure for a PowerPoint. So in the last video, I talked to you about how to make a new document, how to work with layers, and how to make guidelines. And so now I want to move to the next step where I'm going to talk to you about how to import vectors and images from programs such as R. So I have the poster that we were working on last time, and you can see that I've added a couple of cool features that include uh, some titles. So here's the title. Uh, here's the title layer, and you can see that I've added some titles here, I added a main title, stuff like that, all looks pretty good. So if I look at my final poster, you can see that I've got some images of what are actually bacterial colonies here. And so I want to insert one of those images, so I'm going to insert it on the photos layer, and if I want to insert a photo, I go to file, place, and then my photo. Now, I just want to show you what the photo looks like first. So this is the photo. This is what the photo should look like. And you can see the photo is actually quite large, and I only want to have a subsection of this in my graphics. So there's a couple of things that I can do. The first thing that I can do is I can go to File, I can go to Place, and then I have it saved on the desktop to make things easy. And I can just hit Place, and then I can click somewhere, and it'll place it. Except for I actually chose the wrong image, but whatever. Another thing I can do is I can actually zoom in here, and then I can actually use the screenshot um, and actually insert a screenshot here. So I'm going to insert a screenshot. I have it um, know to save to my clipboard. I'm going to hit capture, and then I can just uh, command V, and boom, there it is. Now, this looks pretty good, except for you can see that the black encoding is slightly different between the image and my background, and so this looks kind of weird. So what I want, if I just zoom in here a little bit, is I want to actually just have this uh, colony, and I want to get rid of all the black area around it. And so what I can do is I can use the, I always forget where this is, it's like in the shaper tool, yeah. So instead of the shaper tool, I can select the pencil tool. And if I click down, it's actually going to make a line everywhere that I am clicking as long as I'm holding down while I'm clicking. So I'm using a mouse. You can probably hear me clicking loudly. And I've just outlined this colony. There you go. So now you can see that I've got this nice, uh, um, this nice like blob that I used to kind of outline the colony. And I'm pretty happy actually with that shape. But if I wasn't happy, I could move these anchor points around until I got something that I really liked. So if I select that and I select the image, I right click and I choose make clipping mask, you can see that I've clipped out everything behind this and so now it looks pretty good. Yeah, I'm happy with that. I can also resize by holding the shift key and it'll keep the proportions of the image that I made. So that's an example of how you can import and use the clipping mask to make rasters or picture like um, photos look really good. Now let's say that I want to insert a graph. So for example, let's say I want to insert this um, variant mapping graph. So in R, I made this figure. So here's my R markdown file. And I made this plot, which is the plot that I want to put on my poster. So you can see there's the plot. Um, it'll take a second to actually look like a real plot. There we go. So I'm just going to call the plot from the console, and you can see, here we go, here's the plot happening over here. Oh, why did it say? It's having an issue with the plot. It got confused. Let's see, I'm just gonna run this again real quick. There we go. Yeah, that's code's running totally fine. Um, all right, what about this code? How are we doing? Yeah, that looks totally good. All right, I'm just going to call the plot then here. Yeah, there we go. Okay, we're just going slow. So I'm going to hit export, and I'm going to choose save as PDF. Now I could save as image, and it would save as a raster, but because I want to edit it in Illustrator, I'm going to save as a PDF so it saves as a raster. So if I just preview this real quick, converting plot, that doesn't look that great because it's not wide enough. So I'm going to just mess around with this. I'm sure there's a better way. If you know a better way to do this, please put this in the comments because I'm always trying to use. I'm not that great at R. Um, okay, so let's just see if that one looks better. Ah, yeah, that looks pretty good. So I've got, I've got all my titles here. Everything's fitting. Perfect. 
So I'm going to choose that. I'm going to save it just to my desktop. I always like have everything saved in folders, but just for the purposes of anonymity in this video, I'm just going to save it here. I'm just going to call this um, variant calling. Um, this is a graph from some variant calling that I did from uh, I mapped some mutants uh, to a reference genome. All right, so there we go. I'm converting the plot, and now I've got my plot on my desktop. So I want to actually open it in Illustrator. So I'm going to go to Illustrator. I'm going to go to Open. There's my desktop, and there's the PDF. So you can actually open PDFs in Illustrator because they are vectors. And you can see that most of these things are selectable. How great is that? Now you can see that this is my final version of the graph. It looks quite different. So we can do some fancy tricks to make this look really, really good in R. So, or really, really good in PowerPoint, or in not in PowerPoint. Okay, I'm not even selecting the right thing. In Illustrator. Okay. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to reorganize this a little bit and I want the page actually to look a little bit different. So I'm going to go to document setup and I'm going to choose edit artboards. Artboard essentially is the space that you are working with for your figure. So I really want to have these, um, my, uh, oops, I really want to have my legend here actually stacked on top of one another. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select both of these guys and I'm going to zoom in just to make sure that I get them lined up perfectly. I'm going to stack them on top of one another. Wow, that looks so much better and it's just like a beautiful rainbow. Awesome. All right, so I've got, here we go. Now this is where I want it to be. Now I want to make this actual stacked chart a little bit taller, but instead of having to always select these guys, I kind of want to select them separately. So I'm going to select all of these guys and I'm going to group. So group is when everything now is together and I can just click on one part and it'll move everything as opposed to like each part being individual. So now I've got this nice and grouped and now I want to actually resize this. So I'm going to select it all. I'm not going to group it yet because I'm actually going to do some modifications on it. I'm going to hold down the shift key and I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. Okay, perfect. Until it is the size that I want it to be. That looks pretty good. All right, so let's say that I wanted to make the text all white. So I can do a couple things. The first thing I can do is I can add a layer here and I'm going to make this the background layer. Background, and I'm going to call layer one. I don't like the default. I'm going to call this the figure. All right, so in the background layer, I want the background to be black for this guy. Now that I have this kind of where I like it, I'm actually going to go back to document setup, edit artboards, and I'm going to make that artboard exactly the size that I want. Awesome. So I'm back in the background layer. I'm going to make a box. I'm going to make it the exact size of my artboard, and I'm going to fill it in black. There we go. There's the registration. That looks pretty sweet. Now, since I don't want to mess around with that, I'm actually going to lock it. And I actually don't want to see it right now because now I can't see a lot of the text. So I'm actually going to hit the I button so I can't see it anymore. So now I'm going to go through and I want to select some text. All right, so I've selected some text and what I'd like to do is make all the text on this figure white. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to select, I'm going to go to select same, and I'm going to select same appearance. So you can see that it's selected a lot of things, most of which were text. Awesome. So I wonder, that actually was pretty good, but it wasn't perfect because I also, it also selected these lines. I wonder if I could do fill color. Okay, that looks pretty good. So that's selected all of the axes here. And so now I can go through and I can choose, I want my fill color to be white. So it's giving me registration, which essentially lets me use this eyedropper to choose a color. I'm going to use the eyedropper to choose white. So now it's white. Now I can select, for example, this. I can go to select, select same, fill color, everything that's currently filled in black. I can select, I'm going to do registration. I'm going to choose white again. These are turning white. I'm in isolation mode. Um, I can now turn the background on and make sure that it looks good. Okay, awesome. Now all I'm missing is just this, so I can just manually select that. I'm not sure why the colors aren't around here. It's kind of, I think it's a, something that's weird about working in a PDF. Um, 
but I can still select that and boom, there we go. So what's also nice is because this is now a, uh, the PDF is now editable in Illustrator, I can do lots of things like for example, um, make things different sizes, I can make them match the color of the text, I can for example select these guys and make them all different colors or remove them all together, but I can make that figure really really nice. And what's great also is now I can select everything, I'm actually going to make it one big group. I'm going to copy it and I'm going to put it into my poster, boom, and it's a vector that's now completely editable in the poster. Except for, the only thing that I'm, I want to move this, I actually want to make sure that this goes into the graphs layer. And boom, there we go. So now I can size it, I can move it around, I can edit it as if I was in the PDF, but now I've translated everything from the PDF into the poster itself. So I think that that is pretty useful. So now let's say, the last thing that I want to point out here in this one is like, let's say that I wanted to make a flow chart. For example, um, I wanted to talk about my methods and I specifically want to talk about my methods of variant calling. So um, how do I talk about that? So I actually did make a flowchart, but I actually made it in PowerPoint. So what I want to do is I want to show you what the flowchart looks like in PowerPoint, and then I can show you how to make a similar flowchart in Illustrator. So here we go. I'm gonna end the show. I'm gonna go to this PowerPoint. Oh, this is the wrong. This is the wrong PowerPoint. I think PowerPoint's getting confused because I have so many PowerPoints that are open. Let me try to reopen this. There we go. Okay, so I was talking about variant calling, and so let's see here. Where is my, here we go. So here's the, here's the slide that I actually made about variant calling. So I didn't do this in the actual poster, but I wanna show you how to do this anyway. So I've got this flow chart of the bioinformatics pipeline that I used to do this variant calling. And what I want to do is I want to make a similar flowchart that looks like this here in Illustrator. So I'm going to just make Illustrator full screen again. I'm just going to make it here arbitrarily. I'm going to do this in graphics and I need to make some text. So I'm going to choose the text. I'm going to write the text that I want. Um, I'm just going to make this a little bit bigger so it's easy for us to see. I'm going to choose 30. So the first thing was, um, let's see here, what was the first one? It was whole genome sequencing of mutants. So whole, I'm gonna type in whole genome sequencing of mutants, except for of course you can't see black, so I'm gonna choose white. Whole genome sequencing of mutants. All right, this is actually really not very big, so I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger. I'm also gonna make it um, centered, and I'm gonna make the text box exactly the size that I need. All right, so now I'm just gonna make another one. The next step was, what was it? Let's see. The next up was align to reference genome. Okay, align to reference genome. And then identify variants. Okay, and let's just say that that was all just for the sake of time. Um, okay, let's see, what was it again? It was identify variants. I made this poster a long time ago. All right, so now what I want to do is I want to make those nice dotted boxes around it. So I'm going to make a box. You can see it's currently filled in with white. I don't want it to be filled with anything, so I'm going to select none. But I do want to have an outline, and I want to have the outline be kind of this like lime green color. I'm going to increase the point so it's a little bit thicker. And then if you go into stroke, you can choose to make a dashed line. And you can make the, the dash any size that you want. I kind of like a larger dash, so I'm going to try 30. 30 points. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Um, all right, so now I've got my dashed line to go around my box. Of course, it didn't need to be dashed, but I just showed you how to make the dash. I'm going to make it a little bit less wide, and I want to make put the same box around the others, so I'm going to do that now. Look at that. And now, and finally, I need to make some arrows between them. Now, I want to keep the words mixed, um, grouped with their boxes. So I'm going to group the words in their boxes. Um, and since I do that, now you can see that they're all kind of all one unit moving together. 
and I'm gonna make an arrow that goes between them. So I'm just gonna make a regular line and I'm holding down the shift key to make sure that they, um, that it's exactly up and down. I'm gonna choose the same color and I'm gonna increase the stroke so it's a little bit fatter. Now I wanna make an arrow so I can go into stroke, I can go into arrowheads, and I'm gonna choose one of these arrowheads. I kind of like this arrowhead, except for of course it's way, way, way too big. So I'm gonna scale that down like massively so it doesn't look so ridiculous. And there we've got an arrowhead, right? So that's a really easy way to make some flowcharts in Adobe Illustrator. Now, one of the big benefits to making flowcharts in Illustrator as opposed to making flowcharts in, say, PowerPoint is you can make these really nice curved arrows. And so I'm gonna show you how to make a curved, I'm just gonna show an example of a curved arrow in this chart. So this is a figure that I made um, for a paper that came out earlier this year. Um, you can see Chappelle and Fukami 2018 yeast. Um, and I've got these really nice curved arrows and you can use the direct selection tool to actually move the curvature of these arrows. Um, so you can get the nice curved ones and not those weird ones that you make in PowerPoint. So I just wanted to show you that as the last step of this video. Um, hopefully this video was helpful. In the next video, I'm going to be talking about how to actually draw more advanced figures. So for example, how do I um, make these like yeast diagrams, for example, in Adobe, in Adobe Illustrator. So you can see these yeast. Um, and I'm going to remind you how to use tools like the shaper tool, the direct selection tool, how to join um, multiple lines and how to group things. And then later I'm also going to talk to you about how to use making color palettes from existing images that you have, as well as custom fonts and some more fancy things you can do in Adobe Illustrator. So I hope this video was helpful for you and hopefully you'll check out some of the other ones. All right, bye-bye.